Hello and welcome to Renew, the show about the College of Forest Resources at Mississippi State University. The College of Forest Resources promotes and enables the conservation, management, and wise use of our natural resources. I'm your host, Leslie Berger. Today's show will feature the Department of Sustainable Bioproducts, one of the three units within the College of Forest Resources. Here to represent that unit today is graduate student Cassie Stout. Thank you for joining us, Cassie. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you're able to come. Um, from what I understand about you, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting to know you a little bit more, um, you've had a, a rather unusual path to this department. So could you tell me a little bit about how you came to be here today? So I did have an unusual path to get here, as you said, um, because my background <coughs> is actually in marketing communications in English. So I really didn't have much um, information on sustainable bioproducts before accepting to come into the program. Um, and I really actually came here, great stories, because of my father. My dad actually has been in the forest products industry for over 30 years now. Wow. Um, so yeah, he's, keep, keep on going. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, he, you know, throughout my growing up, there was always, you know, the lingerings of it in the background of him mentioning things going on. Sure. And so that really definitely interplayed into why I eventually decided to come here. Um, he actually met Dr. Ruben Schmolsky, who's the head of the Sustainable Bio Bio Bioproducts Department. Mm -hmm. um, and it was through him that he found out about a graduate research assistantship available. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was looking at going into graduate school after finishing my undergraduate degree. Mm -hmm. And so I contacted Dr. Ruben after I got his information, and we started talking, and I really love the opportunity that he laid out before me and so I really that interest in it is what grabbed me because he was like you know you will have the opportunity to not only find out more about the industry but also use my marketing research and marketing right. background and writing in order to you know create a research project that really is something new and different and will help academia and the industry possibly so sure. that's really how I came to come into this program, Sustainable Bioproducts, at Mississippi State. Right. Well, we're glad to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'm excited here. about your project. So you're doing something to deal with millennials and attitudes and perceptions of the forest uh, products industry. Is that correct? Yes. So yes. could you tell me a little bit more about that? So the study is called um, basically the attitudes and perceptions of, of the millennial generation surrounding wood products and the wood products industry. So I'm looking at not only the industry as a whole, but I'm also looking at the products that the industry creates. Um, and as I said before, like I've been able to apply my marketing research skills mm -hmm. to this project. So I've created a survey that I've sent out to around 1,500 millennials mm -hmm. who are ages between 18 and 38 years old. Um, and so I, I targeted that group, that millennial age range, after doing previous research and finding out, you know, what is the average or collective idea of what a millennial is. Mm -hmm. You're obviously gonna cr come across differences in age sure, range, sure. as with any generation, um, but I chose for this study 18 to 38 year olds. Mm -hmm. um, and so this survey was sent out with 40 questions. Um, as I said before, there were questions about wood products, uh, the industry itself, there was also social media social media questions mm -hmm. and a few self-perception questions um, basically like asking millennials how do you how do you feel about the label of the millennial on the generation because there are some arguments and some articles out there that are like oh millennials hate being called millennials so I wanted to see if that was true with this study mm -hmm. um, so I asked a question like that <coughs> um, and so with the survey I got back 1,479 usable completes which it's good. In terms, yes, it was really surprising. Good. It was astounding. It was awesome. I was very pleased, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and so the survey really is to bring an awareness of how the millennial generation right now is viewing our industry and our products going forward. Okay. Why is that important? It is very important because millennials, they are, they're going to be the largest generation working and consumer-wise by 2036, if not already, they're almost on par with the baby boomers right. right now. And so because they are becoming the largest generation, knowing their values, their behaviors, their beliefs, their thoughts on products and industries going forward is exceedingly valuable 
because that insight is something that companies can use, universities can use, anyone really can use the information to help benefit um, their organizations going forward for hiring people, mm -hmm. for marketing products in a certain fashion, and creating new products that people would be excited about. Yeah, and I think that um, there's probably a misunderstanding or, or misperceptions, this is perhaps what you're trying to get at, um, of the idea of using our natural resources mm -hmm. in what some don't understand, and perhaps based on past patterns, that they can be a renewable uh, a renewable resource. I mean, yes. our forests can be renewable. We, we have not always managed them with that viewpoint. Yeah. And I think perhaps that contributes to this, this um, these perhaps false perceptions that you're, you're trying to get an idea of. Do they understand that forests can be, or that wood can be a renewable product? Do they understand that um, when they are brushing their teeth, they <laughs> might be actually using a wood product because of the mm -hmm. cellulose that's in that toothpaste? Yes. And uh, so I presume, without having seen your survey, those are the kinds of questions that you might be trying to get at? Absolutely, because you're right, there is still out there a perception that leans toward the negative when you talk about wood products and wood products industry, especially the industry, um, because of previous events that have happened in the past mm -hmm. with, like you said, poor forest management or misuse of products or, you know, X, Y, and Z. Sure. So there definitely is still a negative perception and really with the survey besides gaining millennial attitudes and perceptions towards certain subject areas, it's also to gain an overall picture mm -hmm. of, you know, how, how do they generally feel about the industry um, and the products itself, so absolutely. One of, the, um, one of the things that I'm really interested in just professionally is mm -hmm. recruiting um, people such as yourself um, and others to careers in science, technology, mm -hmm. uh, engineering, mathematics, because uh, we have this growing need as our society becomes more technologically um, invested, mm -hmm. and yet we see um, sort of a plateau, if not a decline, in interest in this kind of um, career fields. Uh, your path here is unusual. <laughs> yeah. So, but but you would say now, in many ways, you're working in the STEM. That's what that stands mm -hmm. for: science, technology, engineering, and math. You're working in the STEM fields now, but you didn't come from that. Yes. And so I see that your the results of your project may have value. Then, if if I'm sitting at Mississippi State University thinking, how am I going to recruit students to STEM fields? If I understand their perceptions and and their attitudes then that should help me recruit mm -hmm. uh, the next generation of students to come into to these fields and these programs. I presume that's what the industry is interested in as well, right? They, I know that the timber industry is looking at um, a large number of people nearing or at retirement age. Yes. And so are they the ones that are, that are supporting this research? Yes, absolutely. I, um, I actually went to a conference in August of the Southern Pressure Treaters Association summer meeting, and there I was able to present my research to 65 plus industry professionals. Mm -hmm. And they, their response to what I had to say about my research was overwhelmingly positive, mm -hmm. and they definitely had a high interest in what I was doing. And, and several of them came up to me afterwards and even during question time were like, you know, this this research is very valuable and going forward we would love to see more of this because of, as you said, the industry is aging and more people are retiring or leaving or changing positions or jobs. And so being able to connect with the younger generation and being able to foster a relationship with them mm -hmm. is very important going forward. So. Okay. Uh, one of the things I have uh, observed in the past, and in part it's just uh, perhaps who scientists are as a, as a breed, mm -hmm. <laughs> is that we do a really poor job of marketing what we do. Um, especially in the world of conservation, you start talking about foresters or wildlife biologists or soil scientists, they tend to be uh, independent thinkers, they like to work alone, they like to get out, you know, just in in nature and away from people, and yet um, people matter. People's perceptions of how we conserve our natural resources matter in how we move forward. Um, we don't market what we do. No. 
We don't. So what if, uh, let's say you're, you're at that pressure treaters meeting and you bring your marketing background, what would you say to them about how they market what they do? What would you say to, to Dr. Schmoltzky or um, the Dep College of Forest Resources? How do we market what we do in conserving our natural resources and trying to create a sustainability mm -hmm. um, ethic? How do we market that? That's a great question, but also a tricky question to answer because there are so many different ways you could go about marketing to a variety of audiences. Mm -hmm. So I think at first, you know, you want to be able to figure out which audience in particular you're targeting. Say if you are doing millennial generation, um, for them, millennials, there's a difference between older, older millennials and younger millennials. So mm -hmm. you have to really take into account that first. Um, and then also, you know, I think a great way to start that before you even decide, okay, we're going to go forth and do this marketing campaign or this campaign is to do survey research or some type of field research to get feedback on, say, like you have uh, multiple social media posts. So you have different ways that you've structured a Facebook post and sending that out to see how people respond to each Facebook post to see if they like one more than another. Mm -hmm. um, so taking that type of feedback in is also very important. Um, and so that's definitely a part of how you can start with that and build off of it. Um, as I said, you know, it can be tricky because you have various different outlets that are all screaming at people right. for attention. Exactly. And so figuring out how to grab that student's attention or that person's attention um, is definitely the key to going forward and you know for a lot of people they're like oh you know focus only on social media because social media is the way to do it i think besides social media you should also use traditional sources of media because mm -hmm. if you all people some people will say oh like newspapers or books are going away it's like no they're not they're not going away they're still here they're still present especially mm -hmm. in today's um, climate with the news taking on more responsibility of you know bringing attention to certain things. Sure. Um, so really honing in on that research before going forward and saying, you know, we want to do this campaign to see how it will work. So I think that is a really great way to start off something like that. Right. Well, we've only got about a minute left. So if you take thirty seconds, where do you see yourself after you finish this degree? After I finish this degree, I see myself moving back to the East Coast region and mm -hmm. finding a job. Um, whether it's in the wood products industry or not, we'll have to see. The right. world is my oyster right now, so <laughs> I'm, re I'm really excited to see what opportunities are coming next. That's great. Well, that's a great attitude. I thank you for taking time to visit me today. I really enjoyed learning about what you were doing. And I am grateful that the rest of you were able to, to join us here at Renew. I hope that you will come back again in the future. Also, I'm uh, hopeful that you learned a little bit more about the College of Forest Resources and about the Department of Sustainable Bioproducts. Until we meet again, I hope that you have some time to go outside and enjoy the resources that are around us.